This is the second part of the series, New to Quality Boots. In this second part, I'm going to assume that uh, as you decide to move from your cheaper, cemented, fashion-scented boots into quality boots, you got interested in mock toe boots like uh, Red Wing mock toes, but you were surprised to learn that they are maybe one or 200 US dollars more than what you're used to spending on boots. Why so? And if you really like the look, what can you do to try them out without spending too much money? Keep watching. G'day, how are you going? Welcome to Bootlosophy and if you're new here, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and waters that I live and work on, the Wajit people of Nungabuja. If you missed the first part of this series, New to Quality Boots, where I dealt with service boots, you can watch it on my channel. And if you're not subscribed, you can click on the subscribe button and not miss parts three and four of this series, as well as uh, all the other boot reviews and boot information topics that I'll be uploading. In this video, I'll be dealing with the mock toe boot style and the alternatives to some of the more pricier and higher quality versions of this style. So as part of this series, I'm assuming that you're not used to uh, quality stitched construction boots. But as part of the worldwide interest in boots, you have been attracted by some images on social media of mock toe style boots or work boots, and you like the aesthetic. Then as you start to explore what you might buy, you you, you'd be surprised to learn that um, they cost maybe a hundred or more US dollars than what you're actually used to spending. Why is that? And if you're still interested, what could you buy as a first buy to see how these uh, quality boots feel and if you really want to get into them and maybe then buy the more expensive brands? It's about dipping your mock toes in the water, so to speak. <laughs> and uh, while I realize this is stuff that my more long-time viewers might find a bit boring, I hope that they will represent this generous community that is this boot collecting community and help out in the comments section below, helping new people with their questions. Let's leave the gatekeeping at the gate, huh? Also, let me make clear that this video is not sponsored and I bought all the boots I'm talking about, so I have no axe to grind. Now, what are mock toe boots? Here are some of what people consider mock toe boots, and I'm quite aware that there are cheap versions made in some pretty exotic countries, uh, mostly glued together boots with poor construction methods. But I am talking about quality boots. So uh, these are examples. Mock toe boots are generally uh, like this pair of Red Wing 875, classic mock toe boots. The name comes from the construction style, which is reminiscent of uh, North American First Nations people's moccasin shoes, uh, which is what the mock in mock toe is short for. There is a vamp piece that is sewn at its apron to a side piece, and the stitching makes the joint stand out in that raised moccasin style stitch. Not many of the more popular mock toes are real moccasin construction, where the leather that wraps around the side actually wraps around below the feet. The exceptions are brands like Russell Moccasins or Rancourt, who still make those moccasin style construction. Uh, but I'll talk about those later. Once you define mock toe boots as having that stitch around the apron, more often than not with a wedge sole for comfort, you can see that the classic mock toe like the Red Wing with the high side walls can be shaken about a bit and made with the toe profile uh, a bit rounder like the Grantstone brass boot, where it's a bit more round here, or made sleeker, like the Alden Indy, or this, the Parkhurst Niagara boot. Uh, this one, the Grantstone field boot, takes on the US state of Maine style uh, moccasin hunting boot aesthetic of the Rancourt or the Wisconsin-based Russell Moccasin styles. I'll leave links uh, in the description below to these websites. Um, other than the sleeked up mock stitch as a flat decorative stitch like the in, on the Niagara, they are undeniably outdoor and casual and in that sense not as versatile a boot to go with just any occasion. That's why most mock toes like the uh, Red Wing 
uh, and this Tharagad classic motto are or have a work boot history. The flat wage sole gives hunters and farmers a comfortable outsole and gives finishing trades an easy outsole to walk in and out of a house being constructed without dragging mud and debris inside. Now I'm talking about American trades, uh, not in Australia. But if you're new to quality and uh, stitch construction boots and you're used to spending 100 US to maybe 150 US for your boots, buying your first quality stitched mock toe boot could be intimidating. The gorgeous Russell Moccasin backcountry or uh, bird shooter boots cost about 700 US. In the mid-range, uh, whites from the US Pacific Northwest make the Perry for 325 US. Uh, the Red Wing Classic Mock Toe is over $300. Grant Stone's brass and field boots, depending on leathers, is around US 380. The Parkhurst Niagara is over uh, US $400 and the Alden Indy is around $600 US. Don't get me started. <laughs> So if you're into the style and want to get started, what's an entry-level mock toe boot? Well, I have two for your consideration. The first is the Thoroughgood Classic Mock Toe Work Boot for US uh, $270 or about Australian $450 on Amazon. The uh, second and probably a more realistic entry for uh, a first-timer is the Thursday Boot Company Diplomat boot for US $199 or just over Aussie $300. Now before I go on, uh, let me preface the discussion by recognizing that the mock toe, uh, orange colored wedge sole work boot is everywhere. And brands like Carhartt and others make different versions of them. And although I have no experience of those, many reviewers have uh, torn their quality to shreds basically. So in the making of this video, I'm acknowledging that they exist, but advisedly leaving them off the quality criteria. Let's first take a look at the Thoroughgood. It is a little cheaper than the Red Wing, and honestly, if you uh, want to spend this much, you may be well advised to have an extra 30 or $40 uh, and get a pair of Red Wing mocks. But I include it uh, as an entry-level mock because of one distinct advantage that the Thoroughgood has over the Red Wing moccasins. Their comfort. <laughs> Red Wing boots have a reputation for difficult break-in. Uh, that's the need to really wear them in slowly so that uh, you break in the leather inner sole layers as well as the tough oil tan leather around your ankles and toes. It's not an undeserved reputation because they are tough boots. While the Thoroughgood is not not tough, uh, the upper's leather is tumbled and a teeny bit thinner, making it very supple leather right from the outset. Uh, also, the welt is plastic, the source of much criticism from traditionalists who expect everything to be leather. But that makes for an easier break-in because uh, the boot will quickly flex with your foot when you take your first walk in it. Uh, the welt is, of course, part of its Goodyear welt construction and uh, you can deep dive into that method of construction uh, in this video up here. Basically, the strip of material called the welt goes all the way, or in some cases most of the way, around the circumference of the boot, uh, is sewn to the insoles and uppers on the inside of the boot, and then separately stitched to the midsole and sometimes outsole on its outside edge. This makes it more water resistant because there are no stitch holes that go from outside to inside, and it is more easily recraftable because your cobbler can pick out the outside stitch, peel off the outsole, and glue and stitch a new one back on without disturbing the uppers. Uh, another comfort advantage is the removable foam insole that Thoroughgood provides with the boot. It has pads under your heel and the ball of the foot to provide even more cushioning. And uh, despite the wedge sole giving you a pretty good support anyway, Thoroughgood also include a fiberglass shank or that strip of stiff fiberglass under the arch of the foot. Uh, this provides stability and further arch support when you put your foot down. This is made in the USA, that's important to you, and it's sold as a work boot, so don't expect, you know, really nice finishing. I have found QC to be good, but not great. Now, if you're not that committed to the price jump from what you're used to and you're not that sure you're going to like a quality stitched boot in your life, probably a better entry point for you 
is the Thursday Diplomat Boot. While Thoroughgoods have been a staple American uh, bootmaker since the 1890s, Thursday was started by two MBAs in 2014 who couldn't find a quality boot they liked at an affordable price. So to get that affordable price, their boots are made in Leon, Mexico, which is recognized uh, as a quality center for fo footwear in the Americas. Several name brands, uh, American footwear companies, now get their shoes and boots made there. Even Australian boot brands have gotten to the act and make some of their boots in Leon. Uh, apart from some of their made in USA models, most of Thursday's boots sell for 199 US dollars. Uh, they're only available online or directly in their one New York store. Uh, it's also available overseas if, uh, on Amazon. I'll leave a non-affiliate link to their website below. The Diplomat model is actually one of the original models that they started with, uh, but it looked quite different and more in the shape of the dressier sort of indie style. They later remodeled it in this quasi um, high sidewall mock toe model with the raised apron stitch. Comparing it to the Red Wing, it clearly is a dressed up style of the design uh, where the toe box profile is not as high and chunky, uh, uh, but it's a good remodel. And as a first quality stitched mock toe boot, not a work boot, it's a pretty good choice. It has the apron stitched mock toe and the wedge sole, uh, Vibram, uh, so definitely has the look for under $200. The leather is from Partner Tanneries in Leon, and pretty good in my opinion, from Lefarc Tannery. It's full grain, chrome tanned, and about a little under two millimeters thick, so it's pretty durable. The wedge sole, as I said, is from Vibram, uh, which is a high quality Italian outsole maker that you see used by top quality brands. The comfort is exceptional for this price. Uh, the uppers are lasted or they're molded so that they feel like a snug handshake in the right size. Uh, the toes don't pinch and the steel shank and wedge sole provide a lot of support and squish. On the inside, the insole, re not removable, uh, while it uses non-traditional materials like pour-on and foam, do provide a shaped arch support so that there's plenty of comfort for standing in this all day. It is also Goodyear welted with a leather welt and is fully lined with gloved leather, uh, where the thoroughgoods are unlined. The leather welt does take a couple of days to flex during the break-in, but the rest of the boot is comfortable immediately out of the box. And if you're used to fashion shoes with a lot of rubber and foam and flexibility, this is the perfect transition for you. My first quality stitched boot was a Thursday Captain boot, uh, which is in the service boot style. And Honestly, my rationale behind that was, I like the look, those are affordable, and I can try them out. If that's your thinking, then in my opinion, these are your best alternative for a higher priced and higher quality mock toe boot than the fashion boots you're used to buying from shopping centers. Now, as I've just said, let me quickly talk about why higher priced boots can be higher quality. Of course, not all are. Some take advantage of their brand name to add a few dollars in for extra profit margin. But what you should see as you move up the price range are better uppers leathers. And by that, I mean either uh, less corrected on the surface or thicker or tanned with more oils and waxes in it, uh, allowing a more beautiful patina with age. You should also see better stitching uh, perhaps an increase in double or, or triple stitched uh, pieces, uh, more precise stitch lines that are reliably not wayward and less chance of dropped stitches. You should also see more natural materials in the insole and midsole construction because tough leather in there costs more than foam. However, if you're just learning about these things and you won't really notice, the Thursday Diplomat will be more uh, than fine in all of these respects uh, for $199. Now, assuming you're new to these heritage style boots and their boot makers, let me talk about the troubled topic of sizing. For the more experienced viewers, sit this part out. First off, you should get to know your true size by getting measured at a shoe store on a branded device. In most cases, your usual sneaker size is about, may not be exactly, but about 
your true Brannock size. Most of your dress shoes, particularly from uh, international fashion-centric brands like Echo, for example, and Timberland, uh, is probably your true size. However, in heritage and particularly American heritage brand boots, they tend to size large and you tend to have to come down a half size. This does not mean that they measure any different, just that they call their sizes about a half less than what the Brannock device says that your length is. I know, tell me about it. So, my example. I measure a US 8.5 on the Brannock device. Most of my sneakers are either eight and a half or nine, uh, and my floor shine dress shoes, for example, are eight and a half. However, in most US heritage boots, I take a size eight, as I do in all of these. Then comes the variation in the last. Uh, a last is the foot-shaped mold around which they build the boot. If the last is roomy, with a round high-profile toe box, it will be roomier around your toes. If the last has a narrower, sleeker toe box, your toes may be a bit more snug. In the extreme, if the last is very sleek, you may have to size up a bit. In the diplomats, there is an argument that the toe box is actually quite sleek, and uh, maybe I should have taken an eight and a half, which is my true size. This is an eight though. Look, the best advice I can give you when buying online is to contact the brand. All of their websites generally have a contact page or an email and most, uh, not all, but most, especially the smaller, newer brands, are really, really good at responding to your email. Write to them and tell them what sizes you take in uh, your other shoes, some examples of your other shoes and boots, and your Brannock size if you know it. Uh, be as specific as possible. I find Thursday's customer service to be amongst the best of them, and their sizing advice hasn't failed me yet in... Um, six pairs of boots that I've got from them. Finally, let me talk about caring for these heritage style boots. Both the Thoroughgoods and the Thursday Diplomats are full grain leather, meaning real and not particularly manipulated leather. Uh, they haven't been shaved and uh, um, had a pattern stamped on to look genuine. The little hair holes and pores that you can see are real. In truth, they are both a little corrected though. Uh, this Thursday Rugged and Resilient Leather is lightly buffed on the surface to give it a surface that's more resistant to scratches. And this Thoroughgood Oil Tanned Leather is shrunken and then tumbled for strength and suppleness. But both will need conditioning. Conditioning is like applying moisturizer to your skin after you've been uh, out in the sun for too long and you do, don't really want that craggy Clint Eastwood leathery skin or uh, chrome excel like loose grain creasing around his eyes. If you consider that as a manly patina, you can ignore the next few minutes, but you really shouldn't. With the diplomats in a matte, rugged and resilient leather, in this particular case, uh, uh, I'd use a conditioner called Big Four, which is a creamy conditioner and doesn't shine it up too much. Uh, nor, um, if, if this weren't black, uh, it won't darken the colour as it gets absorbed. In other Thursday rugged and resilient leathers uh, that have a velvety new buck service, surface, uh, I'd probably use a suede conditioner. With the Thoroughgoods, uh, you can use my smooth leather uh, go-to Venetian shoe cream, uh, but that can leave a slightly more shiny surface, which I don't mind, but you might. Alternately, an oil in liquid or greasy form like Neat's Foot Oil or Mink Oil will be good because it also waterproofs the oil tanned leathers better. Only be aware that mink oil in particular can darken this colour. In both cases, I would not apply cream or wax polishes. The conditioners that I mentioned are good enough. In all cases, apply the conditioner sparingly. Um, two or even three light coats is better than one big slap of conditioner, which might not get absorbed properly or end up being quite splotchy. Allow the conditioner to dry between coats and then brush the excess off with a good horsehair brush. Brushing needs to be mentioned in uh, boot care. Depending on how you wear your boots, it is recommended to brush off the dirt and dust after every wear. Uh, this is because accumulated gritty dust, uh, dust and sand particles and grit and so on uh, can eventually scratch and wear and weaken the leather. 
For me, I sometimes gather a few pairs of boots after dinner and sit in front of uh, the TV and an episode of Murder, She Wrote or uh, something that doesn't need a lot of focus and just brush each pair really well. Well, that's it. If you're graduating from shopping center chain store boots to better quality stitched heritage style boots and you've been attracted to social media images of mock toe boots for that rugged aesthetic, but you're not wanting to spend too much on your first entry boot, check out these two, uh, the Thoroughgood Classic Mock Toe and the Thursday Diplomat Mock Toe. I've put links to the boots that I mentioned uh, down below in the description area. Uh, not the Thoroughgood because they're sold quite widely in stores in most countries, even in Australia actually, uh, but not so widely maybe in Australia. Just Google Thoroughgood Mock Toe. I hope you found the video helpful and if you did, do me a favor back and click on like and even click on subscribe to help me get these videos out to more people. Look for parts three and four of this series. Uh, and until next time, take care and see you soon.